So if you're betting or bet fair trading on horse racing, you probably heard of the terms front runners, um, laid to back, um, held up horse, all of these sort of things. It, what does all of this mean? Um, and how can we use this to our advantage? But more importantly, how can you get all of that critical information completely free of charge? If you're interested in learning about that, then watch the rest of this video. If you're interested in trading with BetAngel, then visit our website where you can download a free trial of BetAngel Professional and BetAngel Trader. If you want to learn how to use them, then visit the Academy where we give you a detailed structured walkthrough of each product. And if you're an existing user, then head on over to the forum where we have a load of files for you to download to customize and use within BetAngel. So what we're going to do in this video is we are going to look at the in-play period of horse racing. Uh, Pre-off is driven by opinion, in-play is driven by um, how horses prefer to run, and also other sort of characteristics which we will discuss in a second. But by the end of this video, you will be able to look at a race in play, understand if the horse is running uh, roughly to its allotted prescribed manner, um, and then you'll see how that will influence the odds within a particular race. So it'll put you in a great position to either select a front runner, a held up horse if you're doing a lay to back trade, um, but also give you an idea of, of where the odds are likely to go based upon what you can see on the screen. Now, the important thing to understand is that before horse race starts, uh, when it's pre-off, it's driven purely by opinion. What the chance that people think the horse has of winning the race. But as soon as the gates fly open or the starter lets them go on a jumps race, um, there are certain characteristic, characteristics that will define how the race plays out. But there are three critical stages to each individual race. The first one is obviously the start. So if a horse gets a good break, then you may find its odds shorten a little bit, or perhaps it doesn't get off to a good start and the opposite will happen. Over longer races, that's less important because they also get the chance to make up um, a good or bad start. Then you obviously have the end of the race uh, where the horse is produced for the win. The jockey has got the horse in a certain position, presses the button, and then the horse runs on, um, hopefully to cross the line and win the race. But there's this big section in between which is determined ultimately uh, by the typical pace of the race, how the horses would like to run. And horses are pack animals. They, they move around in herds typically, and therefore they all have characteristics within them that determine where they like to be. Some of them will be front runners. They would like to be positioned at the front and leading the pack. Some will prefer to be at the back of the pack and see all of the other horses and where they're running. And then there's some that will sit in mid vision and a mixture of all of those sort of individual styles. But when a jockey runs a race, they will look at the pace of the race to figure out who they need to track and where they need to be positioned. If you want a good example of this, uh, Joseph O'Brien um, actually published on Twitter his pace notes for the 2016 Derby, and it made for quite interesting reading. And what he's done is he's listed all of the horses within the race and he's drawn arrows based upon how fast he thinks those horses will run and roughly where they will be in the race, because he will use that tactically to figure out where he needs to be positioned. Um, and when you're a jockey, that's absolutely critical to you. You want to know the strength of the horse, uh, how it prefers to run, and then you will use that to your advantage during the actual race itself. If the horse has very little form line, and it's possible the jockey will not know, but in horses where there is a bit of form, they will make pace notes, and that will determine roughly how that middle portion of the race is run. So when you're trading on racing, especially if you're doing something in play, like uh, you're dobbing, or you're doing a, a front runner type strategy, or you're doing a lay to back or something like that, um, you know, how do you find all of the key critical information that you need? Now, I've seen a lot of people look at data and the problem is that when you're data mining, it's sort of statistical deja vu. You're looking at stuff that has happened, not what will happen. Um, and you also have all sorts of anomalies in there that you may not be able to see. So you sort of tend to look at the data and find what you're looking for. So you could look at a race and a horse is, you know, traded lower by 30 ticks for the last five out of six races. But that doesn't actually tell you what happened in those races or why it traded at that much lower price. So it's much better to get a more fundamental, deeper understanding of exactly what is going on within a race. But also, um, you know, you need to be able to take that forward. You need to be able to say, you know, what's going to happen in the race tomorrow? 
uh, what's going to happen in the 330. How's that race going to play out? How's that going to influence the odds? And this is why we're looking at the pace of the race, because the pace of the race and the running styles of individual horses would give you all of that key information. So let's get an understanding of exactly what we need to look at and uh, what that information will tell us and how it influences the odds within an individual race. So in a previous video, um, what I did was I showed you how to automate some of the in-play stuff that you do. So I was focusing specifically on a lay to back side of things there, but you could do a front runner uh, bot, you could do a lay to back, you could do all of these things, but it all revolves around understanding um, how the race is likely to be run. And um, on that particular video, I sort of uh, used a very quick and simple method, uh, something that was on the Betfair website, which is now not on the Betfair website. So I've had a few people say to me, or well, can you sort of indicate to us uh, where you can get that information from? And in fact, this information is um, available from a variety of sources, but there is actually one source uh, where you can get this information completely free of charge. And what this will do is it will list out the general characteristics of each of these runners and allow you to determine how the race is likely to be run. And of course, from a betting or trading perspective, that will allow you to understand if the horse is running, um, or what horses are likely to be run in which particular style. But also if you're actively uh, trading the race or you're looking at it in play, you'll be able to make a judgment on whether you think uh, the horse is running uh, within its style or out of style. And that will allow you to anticipate exactly where the odds are likely to go based upon how that particular horse is performing. Um, so yeah, uh, let's have a look at where you can get hold of this information. So if you go to the racing TV site, um, it's a bit busy with adverts. I, I think it's a very poorly laid out site actually, uh, but nonetheless, it does contain the information that we're looking for. And if you actually go to the races section here, this will tell you um, about the race cards that are on today. Uh, and it's also offering me <laughs> uh, something else here. But you can see these are all of the race cards that are taking place today. So if, for example, we look at the next race at Bangor on D, it will bring up, and it's offering me this again. No, I don't want that. Thank you. It will bring up that particular race card. And you can see it's really busy. Uh, again, I don't think the site is laid out particularly friend in a friendly manner. Um, but all of these are odds checker odds, so we'll switch those off because we're not interested in those. But you can also see that we've got form, tracker, um, time form, and, and other items. So if I turn these on and off, you can see the time form is basically offering comments on the actual race itself. So if you want to be a racing expert, it's very easy because you can go in and somebody says, what, what do you think about crypto? You can say, well, it's a £200 per purchase after dotting up uh, at the bumper for Mickey Hammond in 2019. Blah, blah, blah. So you can see those are just the comments. So if you see people reading off bits of paper on the TV, you know where those comments are coming from. Um, you can put things like um, form and stuff like this in here. It is actually quite useful uh, in terms of uh, having uh, information in there and also it allows you to go in there and sort of say, you know, ran well. And you can, so there are some useful things in there, but the thing that we're most interested in, we're gonna switch all of those off, is we're gonna look at the pace map. So the pace map itself uh, is very handy because if you look at the graphic that we have on here, it's very similar to this sort of thing that we saw on the Betfair screen uh, when I did the uh, front runner video. Um, and this is basically the same thing, but represented in a different format. So you can see here, Howling Milan um, is a front runner because he's basically saying that he's gonna be very prominent. And that stands out quite clearly across the entire card. And you can see some can dance. Um, Alan Andy, Ali Andy, Ali Andy, um, is gonna be held up and some of these will be put in mid division and some will be prominent as opposed to being absolutely completely front run. So you can see the favorite in this race will be run somewhere near the front. And depending upon whether that happens or not, will determine what happens to results within the actual race itself. But you can see here, this got a, a description here of the pace maps and what they actually mean um, and how strong each one of those things is most likely to be. So basically, as we approach one, it's basically 
getting darker and saying this is almost certain that it's going to run in this particular style and down here it's saying well we don't know we haven't got a clue so you can see here it's very likely that howling milan will actually be very prominent um, and and will front run in this particular race but he's a little bit further down the field going off at 10 to 1 uh, but nonetheless you may see a little bit of price action on there but it would usually be better uh, if you're looking at a race and sort of saying that the favorite or something at its shorter odds is either going to be held up or front run um, but you can see there immediately you've got access to a pace map which will tell you how the race is very likely to be run and you can use that information to make a selection or do a particular type of trade but yeah it's very handy um, and you can actually access that for free on the racing tv site so the interesting thing about these pace maps is how often they they bear fruit, how often they, they are so true in terms of the way that the race is likely to be run. And uh, when I was recording this video, I had the idea of doing this video fairly soon after um, I did the video about automating all of this. And um, I had a look at a race at Cheltenham and basically it was a four runner race. It had a fairly clear front runner. And I thought, well, this may make a good example. Uh, little did I realise exactly how good the example would be. So what we're going to do is I'm going to bring up the pace map for you and have a look um, at this particular pace map. And then I'm also now going to bring up the actual screenshot of the race just after the race has started. And if you actually look at that particular screenshot, you will notice that the front runner is the front runner. The guy that's held up is held up and the, the horses are pretty much labeled one, two, three, four um, as per the pace notes. And this is the sort of thing that you're looking at, really. You're looking for a determination as to whether the race is being run in a true manner and that uh, everything is going to play out the way that you would expect. But there are more specific examples that we can look at so you can understand uh, how being a front runner um, or being held up is likely to influence the outcome of a race. I'll quickly throw in another example for you here. Um, Mr. Magoo. He was featured as something that could run prominently. If I show you this image of the race, you can see that he's in fact in the lead, uh, quite a few furlongs into the race itself. And then look at the chart. You can see how uh, the chart has gradually pulled his price in because not only is he prominent, but he's managed to hold the lead for a reasonable amount of time. However, of course, Mr. Magoo still has this issue of being produced for the win. And I can tell you that, in fact, he finished seventh in this particular race despite leading. And that was because he just ran out of steam. So can you see there, this is a combination of a good start, uh, running the horse uh, to its style, but also the finish. You know, if, if you run out of energy, there's not a lot you can do. But because he was prominent uh, during the key part of the race, his odds came in. So I hope those examples have been useful to you and highlight sort of what we're looking for, basically, and what we expect to happen. Now, as with it, within all horse races, there's an element of randomness in here because over the jumps, the horse could fall or hit a fence and that could disrupt the strategy. Over the flat, especially the shorter flat races, the start and finish become much more dominant. Um, so take that into consideration when you're deploying a strategy. But, you know, if you're looking at a favourite and you, you have something set up, whether it's a front runner bot, a dob uh, bot or a later back bot, what you're doing is you're looking at those uh, race cards and you're basically saying, is this horse going to be prominent? And therefore, will its price begin to collapse? Because it's bound to happen. If there's less and less time of the race uh, to go and a horse is leading and that's where it should be, then it's more likely that the price will shorten. Um, so you wouldn't do a lay to back uh, on a, a favourite in, in a race that shows those sort of characteristics. Um, you would probably do the opposite. But if you're looking for a later back, maybe you're looking for something that is likely to be held up, maybe not the favourite, or maybe, you know, when you look at the pace cards, you understand what the pace of the race is going to be and where the, uh, where the favourite is positioned and what price is likely to go off on. It will allow you to make much better decisions. If you apply a blanket strategy across all markets, that's the hardest thing to do because all you do is you get random results. You could be doing a later back on a prominent runner. Um, or you could be uh, doing a front running strategy like a dobbing uh, the favourite on a horse that likes to be held up and therefore the price is likely to go out before coming back in, perhaps. 
So it's critically important that not only do you have a strategy um, and something that you would put within a piece of software, but you actually have a selection that you apply it to as well. Creating something that just generically works generically on all generic races is probably the hardest thing to do. And your role as a better or a Betfair trader is to actually get a strategy and then match it to a selection. And that's ultimately what you're doing when you're looking at the pace of a race, you're trying to identify how that's likely to influence the odds within your favor. So yeah, combine a beautiful piece of automation with a little bit of analysis, and I'm pretty sure you'll have a profitable strategy.